for coming to this event. I know times have been kind of tough with quarantine, but we're really good to have everyone here. Uh, so how this event will be organized is that we're going to start off with a quick introduction of each of our alumni speakers. And then after, I'm going to start asking them some prepared questions that we made previously. Sorry about my dogs. Um, and then after that, uh, whenever you guys have your questions ready, feel free to tell them in the chat. And then I'll read them to, for our alumni uh, speakers to speak, to answer them. So start off with the introductions. We have Korhan, who graduated in 2014. He is currently a project manager at Boeing. And his favorite part of the Leadership Scholar program was the relationships he developed. Next, we have Brandon, who graduated in 2016. He's currently a district manager at ABM. And his favorite part about the program was his down-to-earth uh, connections that he was able to make with the experienced professionals. Uh, next, we have Raven, who graduated in 2015 and is currently a pension specialist at AON. His favorite part was networking with the different students and professionals that were involved with the program. Uh, next, we have Aima, who recently graduated in 2018. Uh, she is currently a compensation admin at Ventura Foods, and her favorite part was connecting with industry leaders uh, and making prosperous relationships with her mentors and friends. Last but sure, certainly not least, we have Shanna Koo, who graduated in 2018 as well, and is now a senior financial analyst at SC Fund Management. Her favorite part of the program was how its unique environment encourages scholars to shape and create opportunities for growth inside and outside the program. So those are going to be our alumni speakers for today. And to start off the event, our first question will be, what was the path that took you to where you are today? And if it's all right, we can go ahead and start with Korhan. OK, so I went to Cal State Fullerton, and I was admitted during probably the worst financial crisis in our parents' generation. And so I was a pre-med major going into it. And then I don't know if anyone remembered 2009, but there was a bunch of furloughs. Dr. Barbuto probably knows about this. So we couldn't get the classes that we wanted. So becoming a doctor slowly became less and less of a reality. And so what better time to study economics than the worst possible economic crisis. So I actually started studying that. It was my dad's recommendation. And then a few years later, uh, it was like getting closer to graduation. I got tied up with Jay. I took one of his summer classes. And then uh, another friend of ours, they were doing some like Boeing case study competition. And we weren't even close to making number one, but I made some connections there. And it wasn't until the year after I decided to take a fifth year, just pick up another major because I hadn't gotten any internships or I hadn't gotten a job by then. And by chance, this girl that was in my class, she was asking for advice and she wanted some tutoring in a class that we had. And she ended up being a recruiter at Boeing. And so her and I ended up making this really good connection. So she was able to squeeze me in at the very last second for the internships. I mean, I didn't have a stellar GPA. I mean, I'm sure you guys are much more astute students than I was going into it, but it was literally just relationships that got me to where I am today. And uh, ever since then, I worked. I was able to travel around the country. I uh, did a lot of cool things, met a lot of interesting people, learned good bosses, bad bosses, everything in between. So yeah, I've, I would say that that's been kind of my path to where I am today. Awesome, thank you. And for our other panelists, feel free to jump in whenever you're ready. Let's see. Mr. Robin, uh, I'll go. I just unmuted. Graduated high school. I went to community college. At a lot of my friends that I went to school with um, went off to like, you know, Berkeley University, UCLA, USC, out of state. They were having all these extravagant experiences. And I knew I needed to go to college, but I didn't know exactly what that was supposed to look like or what I was to get out of it. I just knew I had to go. So when I went to community college, I realized, oh my gosh, I got to transfer someone somewhere, somewhere very nice. And I need to really get my act together academically. So I did. And I took a, a very high volume of, of units and started working 
part-time to, to save, to go to university. And I did really well academically, but I didn't join many clubs or associations or internships, none of the social aspects, strictly book studies. And when I started applying to colleges, I realized everyone had a club, an internship, a title within an organization when they were transferring. And I didn't have any of that. So I didn't get into the schools I wanted to. And I ultimately transferred to Cal State Fullerton, with, which is my mom's alma mater. And so when I went there, I decided, excuse me, that I needed to get more involved with, um, with groups of people and socialize. Academically, it was, I did well, but it, was, it also left some sort of void. I remember thinking, man, I've got great grades, but like, so what? I've got a couple of A's and what does that matter? It didn't feel like I had done a lot, although I was proud. Um, so I went to Cal State Fullerton in the summer and just walked through Mahalo looking for places to join and get involved. And a couple popped up, the Business Honors Program, Center for Leadership, uh, the Center for Sales Leadership. And I got most active in the Leadership Scholars Program. Um, from there, I got involved with a lot of different organizations and clubs on campus. Graduated with decent grades, thanks to the credits that I transferred from Fullerton College. And um, jumped into the workforce. Um, I started studying business, finance, and I got my first job out of college as a, um, as a sales associate, doing outside sales, trying to um, sell financing to companies that were buying uh, large pieces of equipment. And it was a very bad experience for me. Um, the transition out of college was, was very fast. I wasn't quite ready for it. I didn't quite have enough exposure into what the real work world looked like. And uh, ultimately resigned from that position. And just by luck, by talk, uh, I told them. And so I did, I got an interview, I did well, and they took a, a chance on me. And I've been with them for two years since then. So long story short, that's, that's kind of how my experience has gotten me to where I'm at today. I think I'll pass it over to Robin. All right, can you guys hear me? I'm gonna assume you guys can hear me, okay. <laughs> um, so I, kind of a similar story to Kohan, I was actually working as a personal banker during the financial crisis and I was making pretty decent money and then uh, the financial crisis happened and I was working about 80 hours a week and just hating life and uh, so I just wanted to make a change and I didn't have a, you know, I, I realized that I needed to go, to go back to school um, and get a degree to have better opportunities because I, I didn't have opportunities at the time, especially in that, in, in that financial crisis time. So I started going to school and it was literally like my, my motivation was get a degree and get a job. And then I went, you know, transferred to Cal State Fullerton and you know, I kind of wanted to have the full college experience. So I started joining all these clubs and organizations in Cal State Fullerton and really got to know all these, all these great people and change, basically a long story short, changed my major to business and econ and, um, you know, and really, I was really motivated to find a career path of something that I was, uh, you know, passionate about and something where I can grow rather than just looking for a job to get a paycheck. And, and what Kohan's saying is exactly true. All, you know, 75% of the jobs, of, well, three of the four jobs that I've gotten since, uh, you know, uh, is what's from networking, what's from people that I, uh, that I know that have recommended me. Uh, so it, the networking part is really, really crucial to be, to, you know, get that first get your foot in the door basically next person who's the next
out with it. <laughs> Is that Ima up next? Yeah, who else on the panel now? We have Shanna and, and Ima. I can go next. I would I couldn't hear if Robin said my name because you're getting cut off at the end. But um, yeah, I can certainly go next. Um, so I started off, I went to community college. I went to Urban Valley College um, straight out of high school. Um, all my friends were going to kind of like UC Davis or UC Irvine or any other, the, the, you know, the universities that were nearby. And um, I, I guess since like my parents didn't go to college here, I didn't know what to expect. I was a little bit scared. Um, I didn't know who to ask or anything. So I thought that the best kind of gut feeling, if you will, was to go to community college because um, it was, I guess, the easier, not even the easier way, but it was certainly a, a more um, clarified way for me to go about. And so I went to community college. Um, I entered in just like, you know, Corn was saying pre-med. I also was doing pre-med. I wanted to get into optometry school, actually. Um, my dad works with um, optometry and things like that. So we would always hear that on the dinner table growing up. So that's all I really knew. Um, and so I took a couple of classes just as a, you know, very low division classes, biology, and chemistry, and other science classes. Um, and it was really not for me. I still remember it vividly in my head going to biology class 5 p.m. to 6.45. Um, it was just, it, it was just not me. I didn't enjoy it at all. And I, I I couldn't even put up the next five years, if not more than that. Like, no, this is not for me because class is only going to get a little bit more harder. Um, and it required a lot more of me. So I just knew that it wasn't really meant for me. So I decided to choose um, go to go into uh, business admin. And I didn't choose a concentration because we didn't have concentrations in community college, but I had chose business admin. I'd spoken a lot to people because um, it's, it's a hard decision, right? You, like people say it kind of makes, it kind of like, makes you or breaks you in terms of, you know, choosing your, choosing your major because um, that's something you have to study for the rest of a couple of years. And so from there, I had done that, spent about two years um, just commuting back and forth to IV, IVC. And then I transferred to um, Cal State Fullerton. I was either gonna go there or Long Beach, but decided to go to Fullerton um, just because of the, you know, the pictures that I had seen and the class offerings that they had. Um, and so transferred to Cal State Fullerton and I was in my, so I transferred as a, as a junior, so third year. And um, I was, you know, just having that kind of acclimated um, kind of course and routine, um, just go to class and kind of just go back home, go to class and go back home. And I knew that, you know, college was a lot more than this. And so, um, and it wasn't just about good grades or, you know, I wanted to have that kind of real life experience because I didn't live on campus or anything, I commuted. So I needed something a little bit more, um, you know, kind of worthwhile of my time rather than just going to classes at that point. And so um, I think at that point I was walking in the, the courtyard of, in Mihalo where, you know, Stephen G. Mihalo's uh, statue is. And um, lo and behold, Cal State Fullerton, the Center for Leadership was, uh, well, the leadership scholars, they were tabling at that time. And I remember the two individuals, they were Marjorie and I think it was Daniel at that time. So it, this is probably in 2016 approximately. And so I had joined not knowing what to expect, but they had advertised, advertised the program really well. And so I'm like, okay, let's just kind of see what this is all about. And then um, it was, I think about two weeks later from that point when I had originally joined, I went to a Friday event and then really enjoyed that. And I thought that this program had a lot to offer and started going to things further than that. Meetings, um, wanted to take, just because based on experiences, wanted to take a larger role in the Leadership Scholars Program based on um, what it kind of taught me and the relationships that I built within those maybe a month and a half or so. And um, it was from that point that I knew that you know, this program was something to hold on to and, you know, keep on going. And um, from there, just made a lot of connections um, and connections that I'm still in um, kind of in contact today. And it was because of those connections that I was able to get the job I am where I am today. Because um, I used to, um, you know, converse with those individuals, whether it be at the um, Friday events with the executives or just the 
meetings that they have with the board of advisors or directors. And um, I kept on talking to them, conversing with them each time I met them. And I guess I made myself familiar to them. And so um, it was from that point that I had gotten my job. And some of those individuals that I used to converse with when I was a leadership scholar, I work with them now. So um, it's amazing where life can take you. But yet again, those connections would have never been made if it wasn't for this program. So this program has a lot to offer. And I guess I'll pass it on to Shanna. Thanks, Ima. Hey, everyone. Yeah. I'm Shanna. Um, so I guess my real journey started junior year. Um, starting from freshman year, though, um, I kind of knew that I wanted to be in business, but I had no idea specifically what in business I wanted to do. Um, I was pretty lost. Um, but starting junior year, um, I started taking my major very seriously, most likely because you have to start choosing your major at that point. Um, but that's when things really started kicking into gear um, for a number of reasons. First, um, I started getting very involved with clubs. So um, I'd say the first entrance into the clubs was because um, I started talking with all the people around me inside of school, outside of school, and kind of tried to gather consensus. What are some good industries within business um, that can lead to a good path of success, something that's um, stable, financially secure, um, et cetera. And finance just happened to pop up. That was one option. Um, and so I ran across the first club was Finance Association at Cal State Fullerton. Um, it's a great organization, great people. Um, they're heavily connected. Um, so I attended the first few of those meetings and then started kind of continuing to go to those courtyard um, meetings where they, you know, market their clubs. And um, I ran across SMIF, um, that stands for Student Managed Investment Fund, also at Cal State Fullerton. Um, that was the first real gateway for me into the finance industry and I didn't really even know it. I didn't realize it at the time. Um, but that club is immersive um, in regards to investment analysis. Um, and so I started off just being a part of the club and I started taking upon roles there. I was an equity research analyst. Um, so that kind of introduced me to the investment world. Um, I realized that I was heavily intrigued. Um, it was exciting. I was surrounded by a room full of people, maybe at least 50 people, um, interested in similar things within investments. Um, and we also had uh, a set of Bloomberg terminals um, that actually was given access to Titan Capital Management, which is another club um, or program per se, actually, at Cal State Fullerton, um, which is also an investment management uh, fund, but it is a much more serious program that you need to interview, qualify for, to get into, and um, that leads me to there. So that is something I would highly recommend for anyone. Um, the reason I couldn't become a part of Titan Capital Management was due to time restrictions. Um, there are certain commitments that you have to put for a certain amount of quarters. Um, by then, I was already heading towards graduation as a junior um, and senior, so I couldn't be a part of that program, but I highly, highly recommend it to anyone who's maybe a junior, I'm sorry, freshman or sophomore at the moment. Um, if not, check out Smith as a junior, a senior. Um, it's, it's, it will change your, your perspective um, when it comes to finance. Um, but moving on, the best club that I really did run into during my time there um, was Leadership Scholars, inevitably. So um, when I first attended the first few meetings, um, first meeting Jay, um, he was such an inspiration. Um, the executive speaker events, um, it was a whole new world. I had never really seen an opportunity like this set up before um, at, an, at, at a school. And um, I think that really spearheaded the direction that everything headed from that point on. Even though um, I didn't end up in 
some of the industries that a lot of speakers came from, um, I still had so much to learn from them. And um, it really just helped build up my persona as um, a, a future leader. And um, I think uh, that was definitely one of the most worthwhile experiences um, at Cal State Fullerton. So leading up to actually getting a job um, outside of graduation, um, I did a lot of internships during school. Um, I actually started working before I entered uh, college. So I've always been working full-time or part-time um, throughout school as well. Um, I did a lot of internships. I did some accounting finance internships. Um, I was also like a teller at Chase. It, it all started from there. And um, I would say um, after going through school, um, the networking, the connections, of course, they are absolutely key. Um, but at the end of the day, I also think something that helps set you apart from others, um, especially the bigger schools that you're competing with, is your work experience. Um, these days, a lot of employers are looking for that, um, even fresh out of school. Um, their expectations are higher, and um, if you can rack up some work experience while you're in school, it could be part-time. You don't want it to affect your grades too heavily, but trust me, you can do it. Um, I think it will give you huge leverage um, after you graduate. So that's really how I ended up where I am. Um, I interviewed a lot of different finance companies, banks, um, and I had to put a lot of applications out there. Honestly, I had to put tons, and it was a very discouraging process for the first few months. Um, but lo and behold, if you put enough applications out there and you really put yourself out there and you contact every connection you have and you really try to just um, make yourself available, then um, the right opportunity, I think, will come to you. Um, so with my current company, they actually reached out to me uh, through LinkedIn. So that was kind of the irony of my situation. Um, I had a few other opportunities lined up, but at the end of the day, um, the head of marketing who reached out to me, um, we, we instantly clicked and my culture, um, their culture, and um, we just meshed together. Um, so LinkedIn is also a highly valuable resource um, in this generation. So definitely utilize that for your job search. All right, perfect. Our next question is, how did you guys overcome the transition into the workplace? And for this, we can go ahead and start with Brandon. Okay, had to unmute myself. Give me one second. I actually, I wrote out some of my answers to these. I just wanna remind myself, because a lot was done to overcome <laughs> the transition. Um, give me just one second as I remind myself. Okay. okay. Got it. Um, yeah, so what for me, the biggest thing was to just get started and get involved. Um, I spent a lot of time meticulously trying to decide and convince myself as well what the, what the right fit of a job is or what the perfect job would be, especially for the start. I thought for some reason that that was the trampoline that launched my entire career. And if I, if I landed on a small trampoline, I'd be behind forever. And that's the farthest thing from the truth. The, the best advice I can give that worked for me was to get started, get to st just get experience immediately because there is a tremendous amount of information that you, that is, that is involved in being successful in business. And a lot of it isn't taught in, the, in an academic setting. Um, the academic setting teaches you, it gives you a lot of tools to be successful, but there are things from networking to office bureaucrat bureaucratics or, or politics to just understanding the company culture and understanding what culture means in, in the first place. I didn't really understand what that meant, but now I do. Um, there's different levels of customer service depending on your role. Um, so my advice is to get started, get involved, find a job 
that's decent enough to your that meets your standards and you'll quickly start realizing that there's so much more information out there that that you weren't aware of it's like having an entirely new roadmap and and now you can decide which direction you really want to go uh, and you can pivot at any point the best part is while you're learning at this job even if it's not the one you originally wanted you're gaining experience to pivot towards something you do want to do so you got to remember we're working for the next 30 40 years of our lives and so you can change at any point you have that power but i would say the worst thing you can do is to sit on the sidelines and not get any experience and think you're learning by observing others or doing research online just get started and you can do all the other all those side tasks to, to learn more about the industry you want to you want to work in in the future you can do that on your free time but for you know initially just find a job and start start networking talk to people and learn think about your college experience and what you expected when you came in and now that you're coming close to graduation what you've realized the college experience is actually like it's similar in work but it's just a lot longer and a lot more a lot more information Thank you, Brandon. Uh, Raven, would you like to share uh, how you transitioned into the workplace? Sure. So um, to kind of answer that question, uh, when I graduated, like I was highly motivated. I, I was like, I got that degree. Um, I can, I, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to go in, I'm going to guns blazing. I'm going to tell you guys what to do. I'm going to improve all your functions. Uh, you know, this is, I, I uh, by the way, I, I joined Johnson & Johnson after I graduated, which is like a, you know, a Fortune 5 company or something like that. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to do all these things. And then I got there and I realized, yeah, I'm not going to change anything. Like I, you, when you, I think what you kind of have to realize is you, you have to, yeah, you, you need to always look for it look for efficiencies or always be looking for those things but you're not going to go change things right away when you first start your job so you you when you when you first start when you first begin your job right after college you're going to need to pay some dues you're going to need to learn the business you're going to need to uh, you know get integrate yourself into that business learn everything in that business and that's when you can actually made contribution to the business afterwards and especially if you if you join a large company it's very you know you're you are kind of a small cog in this large large machine so it's very very hard to make changes uh, the other other thing that i had a little bit trouble transitioning per se was that when you're in school you have you're in this mindset of Make, always being a perfectionist, or at least I was. You know, when I when I was doing a project, I was always going to the professor, asking asking questions and how how can I do this project better? How can I make it better? And like giving it uh, giving it my best to get the best uh, grade possible. When you're in a job, there's something called good enough, and that's something that I had to learn. There's something called uh, okay, you you and to prioritize it because you 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 have especially if you join a high demanding job, you're gonna have so many things thrown at you. You're gonna need to be able to prioritize all your tasks and and uh, be okay with letting things go and uh, not and them not being perfect. So those are the kind, couple of things that I had a hard time transitioning from a college student to a career professional. Thank you, Raven. Would anyone else like to share uh, some tips they had for transitioning into yeah, the workplace? Actually, um, I'll jump in. I was just writing out a couple of notes. So uh, three things that come to mind um, is after college, kind of have to forget everything because I would say like 90, per, unless if you're like an engineer or you're in the sciences or you're, ma you know, math or, you know, things like that, anything that's non-STEM, you kind of have to remove yourself from what you remember in school and just focus on what the job entails, you know, 
And with that, you have to kind of get humbled a little bit. Like you have to know how to be the small fish in the big pond, especially if you do end up finding yourself working at a large organization or even at a small one, you have to start from somewhere. And so my experience, uh, there was a huge generation vacuum, meaning that people that it was like 40% of the people were eligible for retirement in the next five years when I first started working. That's a lot. So that means that that vacuum has to be filled with younger or middle-aged talent, whatever. And so those discussions of forced diversity and, you know, we have to be diverse and diverse and diverse. I honestly couldn't buy into it because it's impossible to make everybody like each other. And it's, more likely that everyone's just going to focus on doing their job you don't have to like each other and so like you kind of have to learn diplomacy in a sense like you have to put your guard down a little bit and like put your ego aside and say like this isn't really about me and this person this is about getting the job done so we can all go home on time and nobody has to lose money because at the end of the day we're all working for uh cash i mean (laughs) if we're really going to sugarcoat it we're working for a job i mean it's good to find something that you enjoy absolutely doing. And I was interviewing at like video game companies, for example, but of all the companies that I interviewed at like Riot Games, 2K Games, San Francisco, LA, Santa Monica, whatever, it's going to be the same thing. It's just, you're going to deal with people at the end of the day. It's always going to come down to people and it's just understanding who you're talking to. I mean, I'll, I'll bring it back to, just understanding people's generations and like doing a little bit of homework and like learning how to read people, learning body language, like those kinds of skills that people kind of forget. Again, if you're in the STEM field, your knowledge, and of course, if you're smart, your knowledge is always going to speak for your actions because people gravitate towards smart, intelligent people. Um, But if you're just a grump and you don't like people, you're going to be avoided like the plague or like COVID more appropriately so yeah i mean that's just my take like transitioning out and so it's it's important to get humbled every once in a while when you're done with college very important thanks awesome oh sorry go ahead (laughs) oh no worries um so thanks coran uh for sharing I wanted to just add to that. Um, Totally feel the same way. Um, You have to really integrate yourself into the workplace. Um, Also, um, Brandon, Robin, when you spoke to that as well. I mean, um, integration at first, I mean, that's probably one of the biggest hurdles, um, corporate lifestyle. Um, It's very different. and you're gonna need to be okay with working for it. Um, you're gonna need to put in hard work, grunt work. Um, you know, not everyone is gonna hit the ground running, but um, you know, you kind of have to remove all sense of entitlement and really humble yourself. Um, also, there's a lot of like um, self-learning. I feel like that is um, imposed within the workplace as well. Um, I mean, that's a little similar to school, which is a good thing, but you want to always maintain that student mentality, um, even at the workplace. That's how you make yourself a really indisposable, valuable resource at the company. Um, You know, don't just be a processor when you, even when you first start out, you know, always be trying to learn, understand the business um, and really work for it. Um, Also, I would recommend as I was saying earlier, try to start early, try to start with internships because that is the smoothest transition um, that I personally um, experienced. Um, If you have prior work experience, you are less likely to experience that uh, difficulty in transitioning um, after college and you'll already be so acclimated to the environment that you're just looking for something more um, geared towards you after graduation at that point. Um, But if you don't start working during school, as um, another speaker was saying earlier, um, at least don't be too picky um, right out of school to find the perfect job. 
just, you know, um, gauge your options. And I would say if you have a few options, um, look for a good culture fit because at the end of the day, it is, it's the people you're going to be working around and you want to try to find an organization who's going to value and respect your opinions, um, your suggestions and, and so that you have a voice at the company. Um, I think that's something really important to look for. I just have like a really quick thing to add to um, talking about uh, the things uh, the other presenters have mentioned, but um, I feel like something that's really, really helped me and I still use it up until today is to continue always asking questions. If you're not sure on something, you don't know what something means or an acronym means or the lingo that they're talking in the meeting or whether you're conversing with someone over the phone, continue to ask those questions. Like, you know, like while you're sitting in school, you're sitting in your lecture or seminars, you talk to professors, you would raise your hand. Um, I mean, in school, they give you a chance to raise your hand, but in work life, you have to give your own self that chance. And there have been multiple times of me kind of just sitting at my desk saying, should I ask this question or should I not? Am I gonna be looked, am I gonna be frowned upon? Am I gonna be um, judged differently or something like that? And um, no, you're not. I mean, if, and if you are, that means, I mean, that's, that's really negative. They should never be doing that. They should be um, going into the workforce and working at a company um, it, I mean, of course it's really hard, but the company knows that, that they know that you're transitioning here too, whether it be a new role or whether it just be, um, a transition to a different company, you're going to learn that company all over again, whether you do the same role or not, you're going to learn the company all over again. So, uh, get to know the company, ask a lot of questions and communicate over, always, always over communicate. Um, I, I mean, like today I was, um, for instance, we were, um, doing some stuff with work and um, I wasn't sure in, on something like that. So always get clarified and over communicate on whatever you're trying to deliver, whether it be your project or whether you need something from someone else. I wanted to add to that too, uh, just to get a bit more specific. There's, um, I just was writing some notes while I was listening to the other panelists. There's four things I wrote down that I think if any new graduate exercises, during the first year of their, new, their first job, then it'll dramatically increase or improve their learning curve. Um, and just to be brief, those four items are, number one, get to know your team and the people you're working with. They have a lot of insight that you're not familiar with and just by being around them, you'll learn a lot that you wouldn't have been exposed to working alone. Number two is to learn your company's resources so that you can be self-sufficient you'll slowly start to realize that there are people in your company, depending on the size, that rely on others to find information and get some stuff done. And then there are those who are the go-to that actually go and search out that information. Especially when you're in a large company that has departments across the country, you don't always know where or who the right person in the billing department or county department, or uh, you don't know who to talk to about your health insurance. There are these general questions that, depending on your role, um, being resourceful will help you find the answer and people will recognize that and start turning to you, uh, which starts to develop into a leadership quality. Number three is to understand your position, which is actually really confusing at first. Um, it's a pretty simple statement, but until you have enough work experience, it's hard to understand where you fit into your organization. So constantly ask yourself, what exactly am I here for? Why did they hire me? What is my position? What's my role? What's the overall goal of the company and how do I fit into that? And once you start to understand and discover that, try to focus your time and work ethic on those items. And then you can go above and beyond that, but only once those measures are met, otherwise um, there may be concerns. And then the fourth, th the fourth thing, and I think everyone recognizes this, uh, if, you can be, if you can get work done fast or be speedy in your responses without sacrificing quality, then, then speed is generally king. Uh, depending on your role, you know, you have an expert on, on a specific um, skill or task, that's very valuable as well. But across the board, those who respond quickly and get work done fast are absolute standouts because it shows you can prioritize your time and you can handle a large workflow because everyone has plenty of work to do. And you'll notice, at least at my company, people start complaining really quick. I've got to do this, I've got to do that. 
how was that report last week? I know it was really tough. And then, then there are those who have just got it done and already moved on. And that gets recognized over time. If anyone follows those, those four items, I think it'll help your learning curve a lot. Um, and you'll be in a really good position in, in six months to 12 months. All right, awesome. Thank you guys for your advice. Uh, our next question will be, did you guys have any mentors? And if you did, how did they impact your life? Uh, we can go ahead and start with Shanna. Okay, um, yes, I definitely had mentors. Um, I think that the first step is to start seeking out a mentor because they definitely don't just arrive at your doorstep. Um, it's something you, you have to seek and put yourself out there for. Um, and, um, you know, so, okay. So one of my first mentors, um, I was taking this um, entrepreneurship for operations for entrepreneurship course at, um, I guess it was UCI at the time, or maybe it was through IBC. Um, and I had a professor um, and he actually runs the um, incubator, incubator um, for this uh, UCI Entrepreneurship Center. Um, and uh, he was one of my first mentors, I would say. Um, but really in taking his course, I kind of made myself stand out as a student. Um, I was very outspoken and um, just always sharing innovative ideas, um, interacting with others. And um, I guess that's how it kind of started, but it really um, was when I started asking questions to him, even um, after class, I was very um, inquisitive. And um, that started forming a relationship um, that he probably perceived to be worth pursuing. Because I think you also have to think on the flip side of a mentor, you know, a mentor doesn't have the ability to mentor hundreds of thousands of people, you know, you kind of have to be chosen mutually. Um, so you have to show your eagerness and, um, you know, how can you speak the same language with the mentor to really benefit one another mutually. Um, so he's always been a great um, mentor in my life. Um, there's also been several along the way um, within different business areas. Um, and then Jay, I would say, is a wonderful mentor as well. Um, I think he does an amazing job, though, pretty much being the mentor for all of us, uh, the Leadership Scholars. So that's um, kind of a special scenario there. But um, also through the program, um, as we meet all of those executives. Um, and then I did the executive uh, shadowing program um, for New York Life Insurance. Um, and I met an executive there um, and he was also a really great influence um, for my career um, and my life. So um, yes, I, I highly recommend to try to seek out a mentor. It's not easy, um, but once you do, um, start to actually gain those relationships, you'll find that you can kind of start um, down that path of meeting new mentors a little bit more easily. Um, but even just one or two mentors in your life can make such a difference. I think they will really help you, you know, roll you along through your life, the different stages, no matter if they're relevant to your current situation or not. Um, and also I think it's really important to always remember who they are and express your gratitude, even if you don't need anything from them at times, you know, you want to try to also give back as well because they helped you at such an important time of your life. Thank you, Shanna. Would anyone else would like to add about their experiences with any mentors they had? Sure, I'll, I'll, um, I'll speak to this. So um, what, what is a mentor? A mentor is someone who gives advice on, on you know, what your life path is. And also um, the other part is, and also keeps you accountable uh, for things that you did. So, and the other thing that you have to think about uh, when, you, when you 
choosing a mentor or uh, looking for a mentor is what are they getting out of it? If you, if, if usually a mentor uh, that uh, that can give you something spe- uh, that get, can give you something valuable is going to be someone who is really busy because they're at a you know a level of, uh, in their career or their life that have had experiences and they are going to be busy. So what are you providing to them that for them to spend time with you and give you this. So that's something that you need to think about. If you go out to uh, some uh, an executive be like, hey, can you can you can I can I be your mentee? Can you be my mentor? They're going to be like, oh, uh, they're going to be taken aback by it. But if you if you can come up with something that you can provide to them, then they're going to be more. It's it, it's a more organic relationship that you that you build with them. So that's something that you know. That's some great advice that I've uh, that I've got when when you're really going, when you're looking for a mentor is uh, you know identify identify some key people that whichever industry maybe it's maybe it's in your in your workplace or maybe it's in a specific industry and uh, I'll, I'll give you an example of actually some something that one of my friends did. He he was having he was having some trouble with his. Uh, with his work and he wanted to transition into uh, real estate and he basically found this really great real estate agent and said hey um and called him up and messaged him and said hey i'll do whatever you want me to do if you want me to come on saturdays and help you do signs put up signs or flyers can i can i come do the i just want to hang out and learn the business and he went out, did this, and joined joined that person's company, and now doing really well for himself. So that, those are the type of things that you have to kind of look for, look yourself when you're looking for mentors. So what can I, you know, is there something that I can give them as well? Uh, so so they they it's it's a kind of a symbiotic relationship that you build with them, it's an organic relationship that you build with them. Uh, that that will take take you both you both get some utility out of that relationship. It's not a one-sided relationship, um, and that 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 doesn't need to be something like that. It might just be that they're looking to have a personal con- connection with uh, someone someone like you, you know, uh, that reminds them of their uh, reminds them of their uh, when they were younger. Uh, the other thing is. Um, um, I, I, what I will recommend is it doesn't need to be one person. It can be a group. Like my my uh, my friends, my, I have a whole group that I talk to about my about my career. That uh, I know that I send my uh, resume to uh, before I send it before I submit it to any job. That I I discuss my goals with my career goals with and keep me accountable when I'm stir, you know, I, when I don't do what I what I tell them that I'm gonna do. So it doesn't need to be just one particular person. It could be just a peer group as well. Yeah, here I want to add to that point too. Um, I agree, and I don't. And I don't agree with you on some points because sometimes the it's you're right it could be a give and take but like i we may not be at a point of our lives where we can give like that'll be to me that'll be like down the road you know find people that we want to mentor in a way but i i agree with you in the sense that like if you go up to people and be like hey can i be a mentor they're gonna <laughs> it's like it's so unauthentic like asking it in that way like rather like build a connection and like find things that you like in their life or in their career and you just start piecing together that image of yourself right like like what you said robin like you're kind of building your a-team of people like there's certain people that you want to emulate and you think that's going to make you whole and so i'll give you an example so um i used to run a chess club in Redondo Beach and I came across this guy Artie he was a big by chance he had his own aerospace company and da, 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 da. we just became friends and then he ended up like walking me through I was like hey you know I have some ideas with some friends that are going to start a business and he would just like walk me through everything and he would like really check in 
And more importantly, he would call me out on my BS. He'd be like, are you really doing that? Are you really, do is that really important? So like, it's good to find someone that can actually be comfortable being candid with you because you're kind of their protege in a way. Like they want to see you succeed. They want to see how far they can take you. And when you find that good gel, that good relationship of people that they want to see you go as far as possible, it's golden. And because you're going to be able to give that same opportunity to someone else in the future, if they want and they like something about your life, they're going to want to reach out to you. So, I mean, I love you, Robin, but I'm not going to agree with you on everything. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to add some stuff about mentors as well. Um, so the, w I was just thinking about what is a mentor? What does that look like? And wh who has been one in my life? And um, the things that come to mind are, I mean, I've had a lot, a lot now that I think about, th now that I've thought about it. And likely you guys have all had mentors or have mentors right now. You just haven't quite realized it. And I, I think mentors are like coaches and that they they fall into place without you realizing it and then when you reflect she's kind of showed me things i didn't really think about before she's kind of a coach to me um and so when i think about people who have helped me get to the next level without me even really realizing it is i think of like soccer coaches i think of teachers who know i turn in an assignment they're like I know you're capable of better. Why aren't you performing? It could be professional. It could be personal. It could be a friend. You probably mentored someone, a little brother, a little sister, a family member, someone older than you that's going through an issue and, and ha you know, has a phone call with you. So I just want to bring it down to earth to everywhere. It's just, it's so f beneficial and fruitful if you can find one that, that just vibes with you really well. For me personally, I've had a lot of, for, for me, the way I, I find a mentor or identify one as, as such in my life is essentially someone who I respect or have a lot of appreciation for, generally their mindset or their accomplishments um, and how they've treated me. And, and I'll just reach out to them. I mean, it's not like they're my coach day to day overseeing me and holding me you know, accountable. It's for me, it's people that have tremendous, ex tremendous experience and I'll just call them up when I have an issue because I know that they'll have some unique insights. So Nazi, Nazi is one of those with New York Life. He's one of the executives that came to speak. Joe Chattel is one of those. Jeff Black is one of those. Um, Jay Scott is one of those. Scott Kenny is one of those, along with other people outside of Leadership Scholars Program. So um, and I don't interact with them all the time, but whenever I call, they're happy to hear me. And we just talk through whatever the issue is. And after three or four of those calls, I feel like I can make a sound decision. So just realize that mentors come in all different shapes and sizes. And um, you don't have to like draft a special letter or, you know, go out and seek one. They're probably already around and just do your best. And I think they'll, in whatever you're doing and they'll start appearing. Uh, but once you have one, just realize that's a resource that you can lean on. And it'll be beneficial mutually because it is fun to see, to help people, to give back. It feels good. So it's, you really don't have to offer much in return except for taking what they say sincerely and actually listening and being respectful of their opinion. So I just want to throw that out there. Thank you, Brandon. Well, it looks like we actually ran out of time. So I was hoping to conclude this event by thanking all the alumni for sharing their experience and tips for us today. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to contact them on LinkedIn. Or I'm sure they'll be happy to con connect with you. Uh, with that, you guys are free to disconnect and I hope everyone has a great night. All right, wait, before, wait, 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 before we go, I just wanted to say thank you to Jericho and the whole Leadership Scholars um, for first of all, organizing this event, the whole logistical part, um, keeping us up to date via the group me messages. I really do appreciate that. And I think we are obviously living in very weird um, times, but definitely one for the history books. Um, so I really do appreciate the whole program for putting this on. Um, I know it's not easy to, you know, get everyone on calendars and things like that. So I really do appreciate the whole logistical part that went in for the behind the scenes to make this a huge success. And I hope we continue to do this in the future with um, maybe a lot more time. <laughs>
I agree. Thank you guys. And it's always nice catching up with fellow alumni. Yeah, thank you. I don't, I don't Likewise, mean, thanks guys. I don't mean to- It's great to see everyone. Exclude the students that are listening. And I hope you got something out of us. One nugget of good information. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, for All sure. Guys. That was really I'm awesome. Thank you so much.